I'm Virginia Beach, and I edit the Coastal Conservation League newsletter. And I'm here this morning with Dana Beach and Jane LaRoe, founders of the Coastal Conservation League. And I wanted to talk with them this morning about the early beginnings of the Conservation League and the early battles. So we'll start right in with the first question, Dana and Jane. What inspired you all to found the Coastal Conservation League? There was no organization in South Carolina at the time, 1989, that was dealing with land use issues. And I was, uh, Jane, my friend, and my bird watching partner were concerned about habitat loss. And yet the programs that were set up to protect the environment were all about water quality, air quality, which are obviously important, but not uh, in any way dealing with the spread of development across the landscape and the loss of habitat. So we felt like it was important to address that gaping hole in the, in the safety net of ecological preservation. And we uh, spent a fair amount of time looking into other models, the Chesapeake Bay Foundation, the Coastal Federation in North Carolina, and the Georgia Conservancy and ultimately came up with something that was uniquely South Carolinian, I think, in that we, um, we basically did things that nobody else was doing and we weren't sure if they were going to work. And Jane, how did you all get the nuts and bolts of the group going? I mean, how did you get a mailing list or, you know? Well, I think it's important to um, add, Virginia, that you were part of this. Um, that you and Dana and I worked through other organizations, the Sierra Club and the Audubon Society as volunteers. And um, we've been doing this for years and um, on different issues that affected Charleston and the South Carolina coast. Um, I guess to put it a little more bluntly, we were not making any headway. And the three of us talked often about we can't, if we continue to do this part-time as volunteers, we will not win these issues ever. And um, uh, Dana gives me too much credit. He and you went up and investigated these other organizations to figure out what the league needed to do or what, what the league could be, what it could be in South Carolina. And so um, Dana came back and wrote a proposal and um, and it identified what he thought the league could do. And then when we, we got together, we tried to figure out what the league could do. And um, to more directly answer your question, um, the way we started with members is Dana got the Charleston phone book and went through it page by page and underlined everybody that he um, knew or knew of and thought that they would want to join the league. And one of my um, fondest memories is Marie Thrower was um, working with us and Marie would go to the mailbox every day and sometimes she would bring change and call from a pay phone because she was so excited at the number of members that we had gotten that she couldn't wait to get back to the office. She had to call and she would call and she would say, 12. We have 12 members, <laughs> and um, every day we wait. You know, we waited for those to come in, and um, you know, I guess we went from 100 at the very beginning to about what four or five thousand now. Yeah. So anyhow, well, what were some of the first battles that y'all waged? Well, the, the we were have to admit that we were somewhat confused about what we were there to do and, and in particular we didn't really know what the outcome was that we wanted either in the land use arena and in, to some extent in the forestry arena. So early on we got various tips that things were going on in the Francis Marion National Forest such as the cutting of hardwood trees and we felt that was a big problem because that was what was perceived to be a problem around the country. Other areas were dealing with hardwood removal and pine plantation replacement, which uh, to some extent was going on in the Francis Marin and had been going on for a couple of decades 
But what we didn't realize is what actually, in a way, uniquely should have been in the Francis Marion anyway, and those were not loblolly pines or pine plantations, but longleaf pine. And we took a trip, the three of us did, <laughs> with Nellie Beach, who was, I don't know, two, what, years, old, two yeah. years old, Yes. down to Thomasville, Georgia, where we met our longleaf guru, Leon Neal, who was the partner, junior partner with Herbert Stoddard, who essentially invented fire ecology in the in the country, in the world, and discovered how fire and ecological systems on the coast were related, inextricably related. And we had our eyes opened, to put it modestly, and decided at that point that we needed to work less on hardwood removal and more on the restoration of Longley pine systems. Well, and at that time, it was right after Hugo had mm -hmm. struck. And the, this uh, was 1989, 1990. Right. Exactly. And so there was also, it was an opportunity that there was a big decision to be made on Francis Marion. The Forest Service had to rewrite the plan because so much of the forest, um, so much of the mature part of the forest had been blown down. And so the question was what, what should go back there? What should be done? And the Forest Service proposal was to continue what had been going on, as Dana said, for decades, which was to um, clear everything out of there and replant in rows loblolly pine. Um, and that was one of our first major battles, which was to say that's not what belongs on Francis Marion. And what should be restored is the native forest that naturally belongs there. And that was a, a wonderful success. Um, the Forest Service, with some prodding, did rewrite the plan. And today, the Forest Service itself on the Francis Marion is very proud of restoring, uh, of how much they restored the native longleaf. And, and we, to this day, continue to monitor their proposals. But um, they're on target. Yeah, and, and it is a award-winning plan. They um, did. They won. Some, they won some. They won an award um, within about a year of that for um, uh, doing ecosystem management. And at that time, that was sort of a new phrase, and um, they were very proud of it and, and continue to be this day. But if we had not intervened, the plan for that forest was to have it be pretty much a commercial pine plantation. Mm -hmm. and, and that would have been a significant loss. Mm -hmm.